Lugupeetud ülikooli juhtkond ja akadeemiline pere. Üliõpilased, milistlased ja koostööpartnerid. Kallis külalised nii saalis kui ülekande vahetusel. Palun lippude sisse toomiselt ning Eesti Vabaliigi hülmi laumiseks Kristjan.
The rector and the management of the university, deans and the academic family, dear students and alumni, dear cooperation partners and guests, welcome to the academic festive ceremony marking the 103rd anniversary of the uh, Tallinn University of Technology. We will give the floor now of the opening address of the festive ceremony to the professor Rector Dietland. Dear members of the Tallinn University of Technology, dear academic family, dear guests, everybody who's here to celebrate the anniversary of the university today. I depart from the good practice of the anniversary speeches today and will not start from make, talking about hi history. Instead, I will talk about the future and how we can shape it ourselves. And not only that we can shape it, but we have to. We do not have any other options. Yes, we will continue the practice of at the Tallinn University of Technology by continuing with Mente et Manu, with our heads and our hands. But we would like to add a third word, green, so with head, hand and green. Of course, I am not the first one to speak about how we have to raise the issue of sustainability for the future's sake. Quite the contrary, 
I observe that there is a green race in the society. People wish, rush into these ideas one after the other. One article will not be published yet as soon as the other one is already printed. And the spectrum of various opinions is very wide, ranging from the light green dreams to the deep green science. Tallinn University of Technology wants to be a real pioneer of the green transition in Estonia. We want the university to be the birthplace of new knowledge and truth of how we should live and manage today, tomorrow, but most certainly on all the days after tomorrow. And this is a major shift in the paradigm, especially for my generation, as we were raised with a different mindset of always aiming for more, digging deeper and flying higher. It used to be the key to success, but the days of aspiring to achieve more have now come to an end. It is important to be more effective, more economical, to think carefully and also to know the limits. However, sticking to the limits can be very difficult for many actors and visit visionaries alike. Green ideas are popping up even at our university. For instance, you can already see the green footprint calculators at the university entrances, which provide additional credit points for the students who are greener in their consuming habits. It is also proposed that a green university should work mainly in the spring and summer and autumn seasons when light and heat are more economical to produce and have a break in the winter. Yes, we can smile or even joke about it and joking is really healthy, but we should not allow any greenwashing, which is a tendency we see today. I would like to plea here and now that please let our ideas about sustainability, circular economy and green visions be science-based here at the Tallinn University of Technology. There is no point in going against the laws of nature, no matter how eagerly we want our wishes to come true. There is no reason to say that we do something well, whereas in reality nothing changes. We want to give new impetus to green ideas at the university. And for that reason, we have created a post of the vice rector of Green Transition as of September the 6th. She already has many good ideas, but uh, everybody's inputs are very welcome in the discussions. Free thought is very important, but taking it from here, it must be thoroughly analyzed, the ideas, and we have to decide what to do and whether it's feasible. We need to decide what we intend to change in ourselves, in our campus and also the rest of the world. Having said those big words, I unfortunately have to add that we have been stuck for several decades in this path. If we take a look at the ideas which was, were proposed more than 30 years ago, we are now at the same place we borrow from today without knowing whether we can ever pay back. It sounds very much like a cliché, but it depends on the behavior of the next generations, whether we achieve our goals or not. And it's also important what they take with them from the university. Yes, young people have the passion to do things differently, perhaps even being rebels a little bit. But these actions should be more knowledge based regarding how it is possible to change reality in the first place. We need to provide all this at the university, both reforming our curricula and adding new ones, as well as being role models or at least encouraging to them ourselves. My own plans are as follows. I switch off the lights when I leave uh, my office. I will not charge my cell phone if the battery is still full. I do not have unnecessary data in the clouds because digital footprint is always a real thing. Also, I will not uh, rush in with my car when the green light uh, goes on so that I could just break uh, when the next red one is going to be switched on. Also, hydrogen car could be a very nice idea, but hydrogen is produced uh, from fossil fuels until now, and thus I'd rather wait. Dear colleagues, Tallinn University of Technology has a very good uh, custom of uh, conferring doctoral degrees uh, and this is a very uh, good day, special day for the university. Uh, with this previous year 
we have 66 conferral of doctoral degrees as of now. Dear uh, new doctorates, defending your PhD is definitely a very important milestone of your academic career, but it is a milestone and life will co continue. Thus, we have to ask ourselves, what was your real uh, idea and aim behind uh, receiving the degree? I am convinced that it was just not a wish to get a diploma, because uh, formally uh, PhD is a qualification uh, seal for which you need to have training and practical experience. Yes, you might have higher uh, self-esteem and also societal title as a result, but I'm sure that content-wise it was not the only uh, goal which you had when uh, trying to achieve it. Take it as a very important stage in your life, which is now discontinued, and you have a new path in front of you. You have a lot of new knowledge, goal orientation, analytical skills, also skills to do teamwork and international experience. Congratulations to the new doctorates and also congratulations to your supervisors. Dear academic family, of course, everything which we are trying to achieve in the future uh, uh, for this 103rd anniversary uh, is based on our glorious past. And that's why I would like to uh, call you up on discussing the new style book of the university which we are fulfilling now. It is a very important thing that tra traditions and uh, novelty would be in good balance and also national and international enthusiasm and tastefulness. I would like to emphasize that we are a university. We, I would also like to emphasize that our new green uh, way is also in the uh, color solutions. Yes, we can say that 103 years we have used a different uh, uh, color, color pattern and we have managed well, but now we will try a new, we will start a new academic uh, round and cycle, keeping our traditions and looking into the future. I would like to wish you all enthusiasm, health and joy uh, and uh, we can do a lot together. Mente at mano. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you to the rector, Dietland. The academic male choir of the Tallinn University of Technology will be taking care of the musical part of today's festive anniversary ceremony. They will first perform the men's song by Mina Herma and Jakob Liiv.
Thank you to the academic male choir of uh, Tallinn University of Technology and the conductor Walter Sosalu. In order to celebrate uh, the uh, anniversary, uh, we will hear a speech marking the 103rd anniversary of the Technical University, which will be held by Professor Argo Rosin School of Engineering and Weinstein for Research. Good afternoon, dear academic family, dear doctorates, dear guests. My presentation will be a little different today, especially in comparison with the usual academic presentation. It entails a little bit um, irony and also green colour is maybe more represented than usually. And I do hope that uh, it will give you uh, food for thought for the rest of the day. As you know, one of the roles of any teacher is to break the borders of beliefs and what is being considered customary and guide students to think outside of a box. What does it mean and why do we have this green box here? I would say that it's more of a green nest or green than green box. University is a, an incubation center for new ideas, new ideas, new products, etc. But why do we call it a green nest? I believe that uh, more eggs are laid in the nest and it's, they don't belong to hens but are rather golden eggs which are kept warm. And it is kept warm by beliefs and fears alike but it also entails a lot of enthusiasm. And in this box we see a golden age today because so many eggs are, are laid and 2050 is even the deadline for all this. It's clear that uh, it means that uh, many more chicks will get out of these eggs one day and it's important to have more and more golden eggs in the box. Who wouldn't like to be a part of this? I believe that uh, I would be as well. I would just close the lid and uh, be in the incubation box. I would just sit there and wait until I see the results of my work. Eggs symbolize ideas. And that's the way how uh, diversity is produced in the nature. But the idea of my uh, presentation today is actually the opposite. I would like to get off the lid of this box so that everybody in this box and outside could see what things are really about. I am a little bit anxious though because I don't know whether I'm optimistic enough or quite the contrary, pessimistic. And uh, some of the people who see uh, the reality might not be so enthusiastic uh, in the future. We are all uh, worried about our Earth and uh, it is a good idea to try to save it. If the scientists and uh, politicians together know that uh, man-made climate change is caused by our irreal consuming habits, then we see in these graphs that the future looks rather bleak. And it is quite logical, the bigger the population size, the more consuming they will be. Uh, I put only uh, primary energy consumption for this uh, graph. But what does it mean? It means definitely 
that's uh, one of the greenhouse gases is produced more, namely CO2. Another issue is how well we managed to put together these two graphs, which I showed you. If we think about it, and if we take a look at this graph, and quoting our former colleague, academic Avikso, I would say that if we in the European Union uh, try very hard and push very hard for a change, and Asia, in the meanwhile, everything which we have managed to save will increase their output uh, of uh, the gases. What, what can we see as a result? Is it similar to a situation where we have a room full of people and one is not breathing, uh, trying to hold his breath, uh, hoping that there will be more air in the room and uh, hoping that others will pay compensation for this? Doesn't it uh, sound to you like a men mental illness? Mental illness, which in some cases ends up with euthanasia instead. And I am getting a little bit worried uh, lately about the neutrality of scientists. Even in these incubation centers, universities, I see that uh, maybe uh, people are not uh, very impartial. Uh, a scientist from uh, Tartu University, I heard uh, uh, in the spring, that uh, saying that uh, he thinks that uh, Earth will uh, be uh, changed to Venus. And uh, comparing the data uh, with these two planets, I understood that fact based and knowledge based is not something which characterizes this uh, scientist. The scientist should always remain fact based and not pioneer and push for beliefs and ideas uh, to flow around which are not science based. Yes, uh, sun's rays uh, will become more intensive and in billions of years it's going to be 10% uh, higher than it is today, and then Earth will become more like planet Venus. But it does not happen tomorrow, and it does not happen in one century. Taking all this into consideration, you might ask whether the green box is really the right box we should be dealing with today. Adding a more philosophical tone, I would say that perhaps we should uh, actually concentrate on Noah's Ark, which would leave uh, our planet and discovering new uh, solar systems and new planets instead, and not just sitting and laying golden eggs in our green box as we do today. Here's a graph uh, which uh, characterizes the situation in the future in Estonia. How serious is the situation with climate change and whose problem is it? There is no doubt that it is the problem and business of scientists. The influence of uh, greenhouse gases uh, is a fact and the climate change is man-made, this is a fact as well. But as we hear, hear and see, according to the service, 90 uh, seven percent of climate uh, scientists or scientists uh, say that climate change is man-made. When we take into consideration that uh, the Earth's population is at, uh, we have uh, twice as many people uh, on Earth than we had in 1975, and the emissions have grown twofold as well, then the hypothesis is correct. But the the question is whether we can prove it as a fact today. And the question is also what is the part of man-made in this climate change? We cannot prove it today. Considering scientific ethics, we should not think about these messages and uh, shouldn't spread them. 
they sound as if we are saying that the atheist would say in the 97% of likelihood that there's no uh, God or that 90% of theologists uh, are convinced that uh, there is God and there must be one. Really, in the last uh, 100 years in Estonia, the temperature has ri risen approximately one degree Celsius. We have to take a look at tendencies instead of individual episodes in order to prove something, it's clear. At the same time, considering how m much more intensive the emissions increase is in the last 100 uh, years in comparison with the last 50 years, uh, then these last 50 years should be concentrated by, by the scientists and scientists should really clarify about these tendencies in the 50 years to the whole of society. Scientists like to take a look at tendencies and trends. And if we take a look at the latest trends, considering uh, consuming, consuming has gone up, uh, CO2 and other greenhouse gases emissions went up. At the same time, the average temperatures went down and the common man would ask why and how, and we must clarify it. So we're actually back to the beginning, saying that if all golden eggs are laid in the same nest, green nest, do we uh, solve all the problems, or do we just play a game of this green nest instead? Or is it just a new fashion to follow? Will we be successful if we put all the eggs in the same box? Uh, I would ask economists. Uh, I would say that investors probably say mm, it's a big risk to put everything in the same box. I included uh, Albert Einstein on this slide and he said that if he had an hour to solve a problem then he'd spend 55 minutes of this hour thinking about the problem, analyzing it, and five minutes thinking about the solutions. Einstein in advises us to think very thoroughly. Assumptions are wi like windows to the world. You have to clean them and scrub them off every once in a while so that the light uh, would come in. And the same is with our ideas. Speaking about games and play as such, as you see on this picture, play is the highest form of research. Development cannot take place without play. It's the same as we ask, can, you, can your stomach be full without eating anything? No, playing is a part of studying and development already from early ages. Through games, we learn to differentiate between the good and bad. And in the beginning of solving problems, we believe that uh, the solutions will be beneficial. Everything in contains good and bad. And regarding this green box, it's time for us to think and not to see only positive sides of it, but also negative ones, because there's, there are pluses and minuses to everything. So background time and choices is what really matters. When we talk about uh, facts which we haven't spoken about, a lot of uh, text, as you see, typical of uh, scientists, as you see that the land use of renewable power plants is about 10 and at some cases even thousand times higher for fossil fuel in comparison fos with fossil fuel plants at the same capacity. And uh, some people argue against it and say, well, what does it uh, change? But it has an environmental impact and also impact to the CO2 emissions. Latest uh, research actually shows that the temperatures under solar panels can be up to 5.2 degrees lower and uh, up to 
four times lower biomass growth and some species do not grow there at all, which means that we are reducing biodiversity while trying to reduce uh, CO2. But CO2 will increase as a result as well. The wind farm raises the ground temperature to 3.5 degrees Celsius. And Harvard University has carried out uh, research uh, using wind farms and uh, they have clarified that it could raise night temperatures on Earth by 1.5 degrees. But we are speaking at the same time about climate warming and renewable energy as being a solution to the pro problem of climate warming. Then, when switching to electric and hydrogen cars, electricity consumption may increase 1.5 to 5 times. And I am not talking about uh, renewable electric uh, plants, uh, that the electric uh, cars as such need uh, about 4 to 7 times more critical minerals that, than uh, cars with combustion engines we have today. So we have to take a look at the various perspectives of producing energy. We export We export uh, digging and caving for these minerals uh, out of the European Union. The question is, is it green thinking? So we should reflect a little bit more. What does uh, green deal entail uh, in the future? I believe that we don't have a complete overview of what this green transition means. Green transition would need more cooperation between uh, scientists in different fields, more than we have had until now. Green means more using of water, hydrogen, using critical minerals, rare earths. It also means more uh, impact uh, to energy grids, electric power plants. It also has impact uh, on human trafficking. If you take a look at what's written in the media, and also on the international scene, and you see how child labor is used in order to mine rare earths, and it really is, it really has less CO2, but child labor, how dignified, how human rights protective is that? It definitely also means more influence uh, on a circular economy as such. We could speak uh, a lot about this. The question is, when does game become gambling? I believe there is a pinch of uh, truth in every meme. My mom uh, told me uh, when I was a child that uh, food should have some color. And uh, I'm sure that she did not have this kind of colors in mind. Why did she say that? So that the food would entail a lot of vitamins. Energy drink is another good example, which I put here on the slide. I don't think that I need to make any additional comments. But the question, when does a game become gambling? from the point of where we enjoy H&M's uh, uh, very cheap clothes without actually knowing where it is produced. There is an irony, Greta Thunberg has never said it uh, the way it is put here. She said it in a different way, in a different form, but the meme illustrates what I just said. And if we take a look at uh, this picture, I don't want to say that it's in order to create a certain image about the Green Deal. And I don't want to say that Green Deal is unnecessary, but in which shape it is necessary, we should have a discussion on that. What are the worst enemies of any scientist? Uh, ignorance? power and greed. 
in case it is with any people. Now, scientists are no different uh, from just plain common men. Fear for making mistakes, fear of authority and, cri and criticism, ignorance to past and the future, and greed and cooperation and politics which are only based on self-interest. Very often, when I hear in some councils that no one has nothing to say, then think about uh, the fact that you might have something to add and it is worthy of saying out what you mean. How can we handle criticism? I think in the world of political correctness we have become a little bit too gentle. Criticism is very important and criticism or criticism of intelligent people is better than just the quiet approval of the masses. The role of scientists and academia Universities, when you take a look at the clocks already, then I have to say that I am about to finish, says the speaker. The universities have to be the pioneer of free knowledge creation. And uh, universities have to have the possibility to re-evaluate facts in the light of new knowledge. And to courage to take a critical look into the future. I like critical people and that might be my problem. But uh, the university should also be the balancer of uh, the society and not a tool of politics or not uh, a scaremonger, but we have to provide solutions. And uh, as uh, medical professionals have the Hippocratic Oath, the scientists in general should have uh, an oath saying that they will serve the society. What uh, should the Tallinn University of Technology do? I believe that it has to be a leader in comprehensive research and development related to the Green Revolution. Also, an investor in improving the quality of teaching and study laboratories instead of glass roofed houses. We have to be critical, but not only to others, but also to self. So, investing into the quality of teaching instead of infrastructure. Also, we have to be the pioneers of societal discussions where we speak about green transition honestly. Also, taking a look at other things such as circular economy, environment and human trafficking. Cross-sectoral cooperation is important and we have to be carrier of high moral and ethical values so that society can trust. And I believe that another quote of Albert Einstein is here by a very good one. Try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. Thank you to your attention. Dear Professor Arvo Rosin, thank you for this presentation. Dear guests, now it is time for us to enjoy beautiful music. Please welcome Birgit Sarap and Heldur Ari Bulda, the conductor of uh, uh, the choir, will be uh, playing the piano. Good afternoon to everybody. Congratulations to the academic family of the Tallinn University of Technology and I am very happy to share some Estonian music with you today. Congratulations and have a new academic year. Seal vilisetu, 
Thank you for the beautiful music to you, Birgit. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start with the conferral of the doctoral degrees, we have a very important information for you. The Tallinn University of Technology will have a new book of honor in use. It's the third in the row. The first book of honor was given by its alumni to the Tallinn Polytechnical Institute on November 17, 1976, which is exactly 44 years and 10 months ago. And I would also like to read the dedication of this book. Dear Tallinn Polytechnical Institute, your former students, we are grateful to you for the skills taught for our brains and the meaningful ideas recorded in our memories that have given us smart and hardworking hands to shape something new in our land, on the ground and in the air. We, a group of your alumni whose names are written down at the beginning of this book, decided to leave the book as a gift to you for your 40th anniversary, in which we ask 
you to record the honourable deeds done by the minds and hands of your students on November 17th, 1976. The second book of honour uh, of the university were taken into use in a very festive way when uh, the rector professor Andres Kevalik was uh, 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 had an inauguration ceremony on August 30th, 2010, and also had a new professor's emeritus uh, signed in the book. Today, we will take into use the third book of honor of the Tallinn University of Technology, which uh, the motto of which is similarly to the first one, Mente et Manu. The Estonian and English language names of the university are printed on the book in a glossy silver foil print, and the figures on the cover are symbolizing bricks from which the knowledge foundation in economics and science is built of the university. Bricks are also a very characteristic element in the interior and exterior of our campus. The book was designed and prepared by our own library designer layout professional Dia Eikholm, who is also the author of the previous Book of Honour and a highly regarded leather artist. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the conferral of the doctoral degrees and today 66 doctors will receive their degrees. We would like to invite Professor Diet Land and the Dean of uh, School of Information, Professor Gerd Jervan, to take the stage to confer the degrees of the School of Information Technology. Tallinn University of Technology School of Information Technology confers the doctoral degrees for Karl Jansson. Ahmed Goethe. Go 
Ehe Moinmen. Christian Meurer. Sven Mattes. Deepak Pall. Senja Pesti. Mauno Pihelgas. Muhammad Haroun Rashid. Allan Tart. Anton Vedeshin. Congratulations to uh, all of the doctors and thank you to Professor Gerd Jervan. So congratulations once again and thank you to Professor Gerd Jervan. So now we would like to take and uh, ask the Dean of School of Engineering, uh, Professor Fyodor Sergeyev, to take the stage. Tallinn University of Technology School of Engineering confers the doctoral degrees to the following people, Bilal Assad. Salo 
Muhammad Nawait Iqbal. Martin Jurise. Nikhil Kumar Kamboi. Tavo Kangro. Maria Kask. Reelika Kaupmees. Reelika Kaupmees. Mart Kolnes. Alexander Kork. Alexander Kork. Christian Kuhi. Kristi Kyrkä. Kristi Kyrkä. Valo Kõrgmaa. Nils Kändler. Nils Kändler. Siret Malmberg. Ta 
Rain Mennikus. Allan Nömmik. Allan Nömmik. Andrus Petai. Victoria Prilenska. Jane Raamet. Julia Rosent. Ali Safar, Ali Safar Shamshikar. Asad Alamgir Skaik. Dmitro Tkashevsky. Eero Tuhkanen. Raiko Uukkivi. Congratulations to all the doctors and thank you to Professor Fyodor Sergeyev. In order to confer the doctoral degrees of the School of Science, we would like to ask the Dean, Professor Andrus Salubera, to come to the stage.
Tallinn University of Technology School of Science confers the following degrees to Ahmed Al Karori Ahmed Abdalaziz. Davi Kurnian Gish Arum Kusumahastuti. And this blows. Anna Kovart. Anna Kovart. Lyudmila Klepinina. Kefeng Ping. Laura Baeske. Laura Baeske. Mart Ratas. Mart Ratas. Johan Reimand. Merlin Sardis. Merlin Sardis. Michael Zuyev. Jürgen Tubikkene. Jürgen Tubikkene. I'd like to congratulate uh, all the doctors and thank you to the Dean of the School of Science, Professor Andrus Salubere. We will continue with the School of Business and Governance and I would like to do, ask the Dean of the School of Business and Governance, Professor N. Listra, to come to the stage. Uh, 
Tallinn University of Technology confers the doctoral degrees at the School of Business and Governance. Kersti Harpman. Valeria Kisk. Merle Kyttim. Merle Kyttim. Natalia Levenko. Lauma Mujnietze. Lauma Mujnietze. Maria Olesk. Alexandros Pantazis. Alexandros Patsaitis. Robert Philipp. Kristina Preavolu. Svetlana Ridala. Xia Zong Sheng. I would like to congratulate uh, all the fresh uh, owners of uh, doctoral degrees. Thank you to Professor Dietland and to Professor Enlistra. Now, in the name of the doctorates, Siret Malberg will have the floor, who had her doctoral studies at the Institute of Material and Environmental Technology and whose PhD was written together with Skeleton Technologies. A little bit of 
Director, Honorable Teachers, new PhDs and visitors. When I was a small girl, I was given a book about space and I was told that I would become an astronaut one day, traveling between the stars. I did not become an astronaut, but I chose the field of science. And today I have a very honored to be in front of you, having just defended my PhD in material technology. I have to acknowledge that about five years ago, I didn't think it was possible. At that point, I thought that I would be done with studying for some time. I have been at school for the continuous 17 years by that time, and I was tired. Afterwards, I am actually very happy that uh, I, it uh, uh, became otherwise. I don't know if I ever made a pause whether I decided to continue my studies again, because uh, pr priorities change when habits change, including going to school. In short, when you uh, discontinue studying, life comes between and you are less prone to continuing. Instead, you would go to the labor market or found a family, and these choices are not very easy for uh, women especially. Women might be faced with the question of whether to postpone studies and uh, uh, have a family or the other way around. And once the family has been created, whether you can continue studying and whether you can study or you need to earn money and thus enter labor market. And when you want to study later in your life, whether you have time, energy and resources for it. So all these dilemmas, I have to admit, are not very easy. But from my uh, point of view, the decisions were not very difficult. Even uh, in the first years of my university studies, I started working and I continued working also during my PhD studies. And in the PhD duration of PhD program, I also had my first child. I didn't need to give up or sacrifice anything. I had a very supporting family and I have been able to count on them always, but I also managed to study and work. And working, in addition to studying, I made me courageous also to take other steps, including forming a family. So please find that courage to come to the PhD uh, program if you wish to do so, because it is a very uh, precious experience for the rest of your life. So all in all, doctoral studies are worth their time and the challenges you have to face. But it is true that it's not very easy. I believe that uh, in uh, the field of industry in academic study, PhD should be rather norm than exception, which does not mean that uh, people with only MA does not do not find any uh, practical work and experience. I believe that uh, you can benefit to both uh, and with good uh, results also to the academic world. In my experience, the idea of studies is to find student, help students find uh, solutions to real-life uh, problems uh, uh, which are science-based. And in uh, a doctoral field in industry, you can find uh, solutions to real-life problems, really. You have to think big and you should not uh, limit your activities for the future. It's not a field for women or men, but a very interesting field full of opportunities despite of your gender. PhD studies manage to uh, enable you to learn from the specialists in your field how to find innovative and environmentally friendly ways uh, for the real life problems and also have your input into the academic field as well as outside of it. It's not uh, less important that today's industry development and innovation are facing the greatest challenges of our days. The society does not only need innovative solutions, but these solutions also have to take into consideration nature and the environment so that the future generations uh, would have good opportunities as well. I believe that environment can be kept and preserved if humanity takes a step forward and not backwards. I have to emphasize that development of science towards industry is important here. My personal experience in doctoral studies has been enriching in many ways. A new world opened before me in terms of knowledge, pedagogical skills and the immediate implementation possibilities in real life. I have been very happy to work as an electrochemist at 
skeleton technologies alongside the doctoral studies of the technical faculty. I have to confess that it has been difficult to reconcile studies with work in some moments, but I have been fortunate because I could, have I could apply the knowledge acquired immediately in my working life. Both Tallinn University of Technology and Skeleton have been very understanding considering my studying and working and all the parties have benefited, I believe. I am uh, delighted that this combination of work and studies uh, is increasingly popular among the students. Industrial doctorate enables companies and institutions to engage with university academic competences to address the uh, research challenging they face. And everybody is a winner in the situation. On the one hand, development, developing specialists can be working in the practical field uh, of their doctorate. And on the other hand, uh, the enter enterprises are beneficiaries of uh, these uh, helping to solve practical problems. Industrial doctorate uh, has a, a positive side of having a real life experience and uh, a fresh doctorate can then apply the knowledge in the labor market. We can solve real problems in the industry. We can adapt to the working culture of uh, the companies and have connections with real customers. In addition, when you graduate, you have work experience and it helps you when applying for a job. It is one of the main criteria uh, in addition to the qualification. When standing here in front of you today, I'm very grateful to all those teachers, tutors, colleagues, friends and family members who have supported my efforts and helped me with this journey. I couldn't have done it without you. I hope that I will continue to be a player in the development of the Estonian industry and academic life in the future and we will meet again. Thank you. Thank you to the doctor, Siret Malmberg. And thank you also for switching on the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for our last grand musical performance. We'd like to ask Tallinn Technical University Academic Male Choir and Birgit to come to the stage. Vaikusse, valgusse, puhtusse, minna suuda, kui ületan enda. Sinusse usun, kui kindlasse linna ära, siis minema lenda. Kõik, mida tunnen, pean, vaikki ma maha, sina, sina vaid vaikuses ka ja. Sida on vaja. Tahan ja tahan, nüüd taevast, et tahan. Selleks mul siitki on, selleks mul siitki on vaja. Vaikusse, valgusse, puhtusse minna suuda, 
kui ületan enda Sinusse usun kui kindlasse linna ära Siis minema enda Kõik, mida tunne pean Vaiki ma maha Sina, sina vaid vaikluses ka Selleks mul sinski on, selleks mul sinski on vaja. Mul on su ilu vaja, mul on su elu vaja, mul on su hiine vaja, sinu ilu vaja, sinu rahu vaja. Mul on su ilu vaja, Thank you to the Academic Male Choir of the Tallinn University of Technology, to Birgit, to the conductors, and to the baby. We have now gotten to the ceremony of awarding our medals of merit. Tallinn University of Technology recognizes on its 103rd anniversary with the Menta et Manu Medal of Merit five outstanding figures for their great contribution to the development of both the university and higher education and science. We'd also like the laureates of the Menta et Manu Medal to sign the Book of Honor of the Tallinn University of Technology. And we'd like to ask Professor Diet Lund and the Vice Rector for Research, Maria Grusma, to take the stage. Tallinn University of Technology acknowledges Professor Mari Ivask with the Mente et Manu Medal of Merit for their outstanding contribution to the launch and development of research and developing work in the area of soil science at Tartu College. Tallinna Tehnik Ülikool. 
Tallinn University of Technology awards the Mente et Mano Medal of Merit for his outstanding contribution to raising a consistent uh, gener new generation of technical, natural and IT curricula of Tallinn University of Technology, Indra Kaldo, the director of Pärnu Koidula Secondary School. The Medal of Merit Mente et Manu is awarded for the long-term and outstanding contribution to the development of the Estonian maritime sector and maritime education. Admiral Darmo Gut. With the Medal of Merit of Tallinn University of Technology Mente et Manu, Professor Kalju Megas is recognized for his long-term and outstanding contribution to the management and development of the field of health technologies. Tallinn University of Technology recognizes Professor Alvar Soeso with the Mente et Manu Medal of Merit for his long-term and outstanding contribution to the development and management of the field of earth sciences and for the popularization of the field among secondary school students. Thank you to the uh, Vice Rector of Research, Maria Grosma, and congratulations to all the laureates of these medals. Today, uh, we are very happy to thank the large sponsor of the university and Sven Illing, uh, Vice Rector for Entrepreneurship. We'd like you to take the stage. Dear guests, uh, Tallinn University of Technology received research and uh, science uh, fencing uh, corner in our uh, sport. Fencing also is um, a very technical field because uh, there you have to have uh, hand and mind and uh, iron. So uh, please applaud, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, I will now invite the title holders of the year 2021 Olympic gold medalists, fantastic ladies, Erika Kirpu and Irina Embrich. It seems that uh, I was told that they will be late, but uh, they haven't reached here yet. Have I understood it correctly? Yes. Information is that uh, they have not reached here yet. Uh, and uh, I hope that they will uh, sign the Book of Honor at some later stage then.
Thank you to Ergo Metzler and the congratulations for the title of the Alumni of the Year. And hopefully they will get here by the time we finish. And dear guests, uh, that's the end of our festive ceremony. And we would like to remind you that the rector's reception will take place right after the ceremony in the large hall of the students' house. The festive ceremony will end with singing the students' anthem Gaudeamus, after which the flags will be carried out of the hall. And you can follow the flags then when leaving the festive hall. Well, actually, uh, dear Mr. Ergo Metzla, let's try to uh, do the ceremony once again. Uh, I have information now that uh, we might be more successful now. Please uh, come to the stage once again, and then we take out the flags. Thank you to Ergo Metzla. Congratulations to the alumni. And now we will continue with ending the ceremony and let's carry out the flags.